Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we're gonna to talk about why these pepper plants look so funny. But in reality, what we're actually gonna talk about is overwintering and specifically overwintering peppers and eggplants, which are in the garden back there. Now, you might think it's kind of funny for me to mention overwintering when I'm in zone 10B San Diego, where we might get a hairline of a frost. But what overwintering really means is taking a plant that's usually grown as an annual, perfect example is a pepper, and having it survive through the off season, usually winter. So then the following spring, when you are ready to actually get that pepper plant going again, you have a much more robust plant rather than just a seedling. So this can be done for a few different plants. The main ones that usually are talked about are peppers and eggplants. So the reason why peppers and eggplants are the ones that are usually talked about for overwintering the most is because these are both plants that really like having a warm growing season. So when you have the beginning of spring and things are still cool and slow, your plant is just kind of barely growing and you're really losing those first two, three months to just getting the plant to establish itself. So by overwintering these guys, you're basically skipping that first two to three month cycle. And for me, for example, last year, or actually this year, I had an eggplant at the beginning of spring rather than in summer. So there's a huge time advantage you get from overwintering. It's really not that hard. Today we're gonna to talk about how to take peppers straight up out of the ground, put them in a pot and prep them from overwintering. We're also gonna talk about how to overwinter a pepper in the ground if you're in a warmer climate like I am. And lastly, we're gonna to touch on eggplant and overwintering eggplant in the ground and why you're not actually losing anything by doing it. So if that looks and sounds interesting to you guys, stay tuned, let's get into it. All right, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and prune and then dig this out and put it in the smart pot. And the reason why is because I'm gonna overwinter it. So I figure while I'm doing it, I might as well show you guys my approach. But I'm gonna bring in the camera a lot tighter so you could actually see what I'm doing. All right, so we're up close and personal with this buquino pepper here. This is a red buquino. You could see this pepper here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, there is some fruit on here. Unfortunately, I'm going to just scrap it. It's not gonna be that much in the long run. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shaping this. And what I'm going for here is that when this overwinters, the idea is that you want it to grow back into a nice shape later. So first thing we're gonna do is clear off anything on the outside, and then I'm gonna drop it, and then I'm gonna clear off any clutter inside. So I'm gonna just start cutting. I might jump in and talk a little bit, but for the most part, I just wanted to do a demonstration. So I'm also gonna come in and clean out anything that looks like this. This is like um, some sort of disease issue where the pepper is dying off. So anything that looks like that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off as well. All right, so what you could see now is that the pepper was originally all the way out here and up to here, and I've now dropped it down significantly. I've cut off any of the parts of the pepper that have new leaves or anything that's like new pepper flowers because I don't wanna, I don't want the plant focusing on that while I'm trying to focus it on surviving. So a lot of people will actually cut off all foliage when they pot them up, but it's still fairly early in the season and this plant will continue to grow some. So I'm gonna leave it at this stage, pot it up, and it might still grow a little bit more by you know November. And at that point, I'll come back and prune it again. But at this point, we're good to just dig this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna come in on the outer edge of that plant's drip line. I'm gonna make a few cuts with a trowel. The idea here is that I wanna cut off as many of those little feeder roots so that when I'm pulling it out of the ground, I'm not gonna be messing it up and tearing off other parts. So this doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't actually even entirely necessary, but I find that I tend to do better if I do this first. Okay, so I accidentally damaged that branch there. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip it off. So now I've cut all the way around it. Then I'm gonna come out at an angle and try to pop the plant out while giving it a little encouragement here. Boop. All right. So there you have it. I actually have quite a lot of roots preserved. Oh, wow. So look in here. So I just took a sniff because that's like a mycorrhizal network. So it has a slight mushroom smell to it. So it is actually quite nice, but in the end, all this dirt or soil, I should say, uh, is actually pretty clayey. 
So if I put this in a pot, chances are it's gonna just stagnate. So I wanna clean it up somewhat. So unfortunately I will lose some of that mycorrhizal, but that's okay. Some of it will stay behind and it will continue. So I feel pretty good about that right there. I got most of that extra soil off that I don't need and I have a pretty good amount of roots actually. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this and transplant it into a pot. So if you're seeing this, you'll see that there was actually a change of plans. As I was knocking some of the soil off and moving it over, I actually noticed a couple grubs inside. What they like to do is get right into the bottom of the root ball and actually eat your roots. Um, so what I ended up doing is knocking all the soil loose to make sure I didn't have any grubs left. Uh, some people could say that, you know, you might want to rinse this to make sure there isn't anything else. Um, but I feel pretty good about it at this stage. So what I'm going to do actually instead, since this is actually a quite small plant, instead of going with the five gallon smart pot, I'm going to go for this repurposed one gallon pot. So what I've done is I've created a little soil level down there with a hill. I'm going to take these roots and kind of try to spread them out a little bit so that they're sitting around that hill. And then I'm going to take some soil and throw it on top. But as I'm doing this, I'm going to shake the pot a little bit like this. And the idea is, is that's going to work all that soil in between the roots. Because what you really don't want is little air pockets inside your root ball. So I'm going to do this a couple times. Afterwards, all you have to do is just water it. And just basically the most important thing about overwintering peppers is making sure you don't water it too much because there's not going to be growing much. So if you keep watering it, eventually the water is going to build up. The plant's going to go stagnant from lack of oxygen due to all the water and it'll die. So that's the most common way of losing an overwintered pepper is not managing your watering. And in this case, it's actually on the level of overwatering it. Okay. There you go. So it's been about three days now from the time that I dug this up. This is that same pepper that I showed you guys, how I pruned, trimmed it down, dug it out of the ground, totally removed the soil and repotted it. So three days on, it's still looking good. Um, originally I had about six or eight leaves on here and I left those on there on purpose. Usually remove most of the foliage or some people like to remove all of it. But I like to leave a couple leaves on as an indicator. For instance, if you look at this right here, this is a, these are two other ones that I overwintered in much smaller pots. Um, the leaves are very upright. They don't look like they're droopy, like they have some sort of water stress. And originally when I dug this out, it did appear all droopy. And that's what I expected. I, if you think about it, I just removed all the soil from its roots. I had no access to water for some period of time. But what I noticed is after a day, all those leaves perked right back up. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. When I saw that all the leaves actually had perked up, that was a great sign to me because it meant that the roots that I just ripped out of the ground and put into new soil did find contact and were able to actually transport water up into the leaves. So that's a great sign that basically this is alive. I think it will make it for certainty. Um, eventually those leaves did drop. That's not surprising. It's pretty expected. They were very stressed for a few days there. But the fact that they did perk back up is a great sign that the plant's gonna make it. Um, while I'm talking about the watering issue, I'll say that the hardest thing about overwintering peppers really is managing your water. It's really easy to overwater your wintered peppers. And the reason why is because you see a pot like this, you think, okay, this needs a significant amount of water. But in reality, this plant's not supporting any sort of foliage. It's not growing anything. So it's pretty much just the stem and uh, maybe a couple tiny leaves. So think about how much water that would take it's negligible. So really the most important thing that I could say is that when you're overwintering a pepper, do try to be mindful of how much water it gets. If it's raining, you don't want to leave this set out in the rain because it'll just entirely get saturated. And the reason why they, I guess I should say that's bad is that when something gets entirely saturated with water and there's nowhere for oxygen to penetrate into the soil and roots do need some amount of oxygen in order to survive. When you see white roots on a plant, that's usually a sign that they're getting plenty of oxygen and they're healthy. If you dig it out and you see that all the roots are brown or black, there's a good chance that that plant had sat in stagnant anoxic water, which means that there was no oxygen in it. And that's a very easy situation to happen over the winter, because like I said, this plant isn't really sucking up much water at all. So be mindful of your water, try to protect them from the rain. That's the main tip I'd say for overwintering here, especially if you're doing it outside. Now these two, 
I did a little differently. I dug these out by the root ball and left the native soil intact when I put it into the new pots. So what that's done is, since I didn't sever any of the main roots, all the foliage is still supported and alive. Again, no problem with that. After maybe a month, a couple weeks, I'll come back and trim this again. Eventually I might up uh, pot these into a one gallon container like this, just to make sure that it has everything it needs. Um, another thing I'll say is that on this habanada, it actually was about this big when I dug it out and had fruit and everything was droopy and sad. So I actually removed all of it and now it's bounced back. Before we move on to the next thing I want to show you guys how to overwinter, which is eggplant, uh, I wanted to talk about why I dug up some of those peppers to overwinter them and give you guys another option, at least those of you in warmer climates like me in Zone 10B. So this here is a very special pepper. This is a Ancho Poblano. And if you watched my first tour video on the Epic Gardening YouTube channel, I mentioned that uh, my girlfriend bought some tomato plants and some peppers, and that's how everything here started. Well, this is one of the first plants. This is one of the original peppers that she had purchased. And it's been in the ground ever since. So coming on two years pretty soon. And what you'll see is that once the pepper has been overwintered, especially one that's been in ground, it'll start to become a lot more like a tree. So this down here, it's very woody, it's very hard. It doesn't feel supple and green like these guys here. It feels very much like a piece of wood. And that happens over time. As the pepper gets older, it'll start to become more lignified and it'll get this kind of bark to it, which is perfectly fine. It's a normal life cycle of a pepper is that it starts to develop more of this kind of barky look to it. Um, but same basic idea as you would do it in a pot. You want to trim it down to some sort of base structure. So in this case, I have like three main branches and that's it. So managing the watering here will be a little more challenging since it's in the ground. I can't really do much about it. Um, but luckily this is a much more established plant. So it has roots going all throughout. So chances are it won't immediately drown if there's a lot of water here because it's got plenty of other roots probably spread all throughout this area here around me. So the main reason I dig up other pepper plants and choose to leave some is that that other pepper, for example, was in a bed that I wanted to replant. So digging it up was giving me the option of regrowing something in that same space. But if you are fine with where it is and don't really have a need for anything else to go in there, then it's perfectly fine to just overwinter it in the ground. And again, in our climate, that's pretty easy. In colder climates, you're gonna have to do, <laughs> do a lot of work to keep it alive in the ground, unless you get specific varieties that can handle the cold. And there are actually some chili peppers that can withstand cold and even snow and be totally fine. But for us, something like Ancho Poblano, totally fine to overwinter in the ground. So now let's go talk about eggplant back over there. So I know I said we were gonna talk about the eggplant, but it strikes me that I actually have the perfect example of what a pepper is going to do once it has been overwintered and has gone into spring. So this pepper, which I've pruned very heavily, is very typical for how a overwintered pepper will look. Now, as you start getting into spring and the temperatures are picking up, there's more daylight hours, you're going to start seeing your pepper exploding in new growth. And the way that happens is all along the main growing branches, you'll see little pops of leaves coming out. And right now, the way this is coming out, doesn't look too bad. It might kind of expand out and create a nice canopy. But more realistically, what I often seen with my overwintered peppers is that you'll have this kind of chaotic amount of leaves coming out from everywhere. This is where, like, so basically once you get to this point, you could just go ahead, pop this right on the ground. As soon as you start getting any amount of new growth at all, the pepper is gonna do fine going right in the ground, especially somewhere like zone 10B where you don't really get to a dangerous point in terms of temperatures. Now a note though is this amount of growth here does look really nice at the moment, but this is gonna create a very chaotic canopy. So your beginning, like when you first start seeing this, this is the best time to actually start thinking about the way you want your pepper to grow. So for instance, I have two little bits right here, two new sprouting growths. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through pinch off that one so that I don't have this tangle of branches here. What you want to do is kind of go through the whole plant, look where there's multiple emergences of new leaves coming out, and sort of st start thinning those out so that when this plant does kind of pop out and grow, it creates a nice open canopy where you could reach in very easily. It's not going to be too clustered and crowded because these branches now 
are going to be supporting the weight of all this new growth. So you really want to think about some sort of control at that early stage of spring. But this is actually, honestly, probably what your plant is going to look like in spring. And this is a great point to just take that plant, pop it in the ground, off to the races. And that's all you really need to do. Um, you could amend the planting site, but really overwintering is as simple as being patient, waiting for the growth to come back, and then spring, just pop it in the ground. Just a quick note, if you are in a zone that's colder than zone 10B, which is probably the majority of you, um, there's a couple other things you're gonna have to be concerned about. And mostly that's that when you overwinter plants in a colder area, you have to take your plant and usually bring it indoors or else it could die from the frost exposure, the cold exposure. There are a couple other steps you have to do. For instance, you wanna make sure that there are zero pests on your plant or in the soil before you bring it inside because that could propagate once it's indoors. Um, I'm not going to cover pretty much any of those because I don't have any personal experience with it, but the basic idea of how you're gonna overwinter in terms of cleaning it up, pruning it, putting it into a pot of soil are going to basically be the same. So if you are interested in overwintering in a colder climate, you're probably going to need to do a little more supplemental research. What you see here are four different eggplants that I have overwintered from last year. So very similar process to a pepper plant where you're basically trying to prune it down to a much smaller size to control its growth over the winter. Um, a couple things that I would mention about eggplant is that even more so than a pepper, eggplant really does need the heat to really start growing and producing. So you'll find that your eggplant will probably be the last of your solanaceous plants to really start getting going. So first will be your tomatoes. They seem to grow fine in the colder spring, then your peppers, and then eggplant last. So overwintering eggplant is really like the biggest boost you could get in terms of eggplant production because you're just going to be so far ahead any other plant that you're gonna get. It's not just the size of the plant that matters, it's actually the root system that it's built over that time. So these eggplants have been in the ground now for over a year, which means that their roots have really had a lot of time to explore and fan out and sort of get into all this different soil here. You'll see that the eggplant furthest from me actually doesn't really look so good. So I'll bring in a closer shot so you guys could take a look at it. That's gonna be an example of a plant that I'm not willing to save and overwinter for next year. It's too far gone in my opinion, um, but actually what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and start new eggplant seedlings today and overwinter those seedlings for next year. So that's another option, a little bonus tip there. Um, but next what we're gonna do is actually shape and cut these back so you guys could see the process. And I also really wanna talk about why overwintering something like an eggplant doesn't mean that you're actually losing this garden space. So that's gonna be a little bonus tip at the end here. Now you guys saw an example of what a unhealthy eggplant's gonna look like, one that I'm not gonna be bothering to save. But here's one that looks quite healthy. So it has lots of new leaves. They look pretty good. There's a little bit of grasshopper damage, but <laughs> nothing that's going to affect the plant. Um, also, what I see is somehow I missed the biggest uh, Oriental Express eggplant that I've ever grown, which is what this variety is. So that's a nice little treat. Um, still feels really nice. It's not like weird and firm. So I'll go ahead and eat that. But that's not what this is about. So let's take a look at the plant first. You'll see that its canopy goes all the way out. Might be off screen there, but the main thing we're gonna to try to do first is control everything on the outside. Once you do that, it gets a lot easier to fix the rest of it. I'm also gonna come in and start cutting off some of the dead growth. So I'll put that right up there. There's nothing in there. It's, you can see when I, when I actually snap it, it just breaks. There's nothing green inside. So that's totally a dead piece of branch. Um, that's an easy cut. The rest of it, might feel bad because you're basically cutting a plant that still looks like it's alive. But what's going to happen is that although the eggplant looks like it's still growing, it's going to have a really hard time actually ripening all the fruit that it might set. And that's because the temperatures are dropping to such a low degree that eggplant doesn't really want to ripen anything at that point. And what you'll see is that you might get some sort of ripening, but really in the end that eggplant's just going to rot and it's not gonna form a nice fruit that you wanna eat. So there's no point in trying to force it to do something it doesn't wanna do. All we're trying to do right now is trick it into basically surviving so that next year it'll give us everything that we want out of it. 
So a couple big cuts here. You could see that this is also quite woody, just like the pepper plant that I showed you earlier. And same idea as the pepper, or as the eggplant in this case gets older, it's gonna start becoming more lignified, so more woody in all of its major trunks, especially anything that's really old. You'll see that the new growth has this kind of fuzzy purple look to it. And I could actually just rub that right off. But as it gets older, it's gonna start setting these woody branches. And that's why you could see all this kind of woody looking material in the middle of this plant. So now I've kind of come around, I've taken down most of the exterior branches. I'll get this out of the way. Um, so I see a couple flowers. I definitely want to remove those. Um, again, I find that just like with the peppers, leaving some amount of green on there is good because I don't want the plant to completely stop growing. It's still in the soil after all. I just want it to not really produce any fruit. So that's kind of the mindset you want to have is not how do I entirely halt this plant, but how do I keep it alive and happy without forcing it to produce all this fruit that I don't want it to do. And now I've got basically one major trunk coming up. There's an offshoot right there. And then there's two major offshoots right here. So it looks like I'm almost there. I'm gonna come through though. I think I'm gonna chop this branch off here. Actually, I'll go a little higher and give that a chance to grow out in this direction. So that's another thing you wanna think about is Anywhere that I'm pruning, there's a good chance it could sprout from any point on this right now. But basically you want to think about which way do you want this plant to grow next year. So I do want something going this way, but not that much because I have this nice mallow behind me. But I have plenty of growing room over here, which is why I'm leaving a lot of that growth over here and a lot of that growth over here. Now, I will come through and take off any of the flowers because like I said, they're very likely not going to survive anyway. Um, there's still a little bit too much leaf here for me. So I'm gonna prune that. Anything that looks kind of ratty, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. There's no point in leaving it behind. And you'll see that I'm taking off a lot of these big leaves. That's because they're the oldest, so they're gonna die soon anyway. And I'm leaving all these new kind of leaflets. You can see a little one there, a nice pair right there. Those are gonna now take over as the primary leaf matter on this plant. But really that's all there is to it. Very similar to how you would do a pepper, but the rewards you reap from overwintering an eggplant are just so high. Uh, I mean, the fact that you could prune this back and in the spring you'll actually have eggplant rather than having to wait till summer is fantastic. So highly, highly recommend it. Um, definitely something you should do if you have any eggplant growing in the ground. And same principle as the pepper, you could actually dig this out put it in a pot, save it for next year. Um, I'm opting to leave it in the ground. That's what I did last year and it worked out well for me. Um, just a quick note on eggplant is, anecdotally I've heard that most eggplant production will slow down around year three. So this is going into year two. So next year I will probably not overwinter these again, but instead I'll opt to start a new plant. And this eggplant right next to me, I'm gonna just go ahead and chop it while I'm talking. Um, is actually one that I replaced as well. So I'll bring you in a little closer, but you might be able to tell from there, but the trunk on this guy is very much more substantial than the one over here. And that's because this one was only planted this year. So this is now a six month old eggplant, whereas this is now a 18 month old eggplant. Um, another thing I'm gonna talk about next is what to do with all the garden around your overwintered plants. And the nice thing about it is you could actually use all this growing space. So let's talk about that next. This is my favorite part about overwintering actually, is that you lose literally nothing. I might have alluded to that earlier, but basically what I have here is this eggplant bed is actually the very first no-till bed that I created. And so in that same nature, I'm gonna keep it going. And I'm just gonna bury the straw. This is all new compost that I got. And I'm going to just try to be careful not to crowd the stem too much. It is woody, so it's not going to really want to root from there anymore. Um, so really just, you could add new dirt, soil, compost, etc. But try to avoid not piling it up too high around your plants, especially something like an eggplant. Tomato would be fine because it can grow roots from anywhere that's underground. But eggplant, especially when it's this woody, try to avoid burying it. 
So basically what I'm doing here is I'm building this bed up. This is going to provide nutrients for the eggplant in the coming spring. But also what it's going to do is let me grow something the whole entire winter while this is overwintering. So I'm not going to waste any garden space by doing this overwintering process. The fact that you prune back all the foliage is going to allow the sun to come down into the garden bed floor here. And as the eggplant keeps growing, I'll just keep pruning it back any of the new leaves because what I'm going to plant and grow here is actually probably lettuce greens, um, either lettuce or arugula. I'm going to go ahead and seed this all out. And that's going to do two things. It's going to keep life going in this garden bed all through winter. It's going to give me new space to grow in. And the most important thing I think is that it's going to give any water that comes into contact with this bed somewhere to go. So we don't want these sitting in water, same idea as the peppers. If they sit in water for too long, they're not gonna be very happy and there's a good chance they could die. So by growing something alongside it, it's actually gonna give that water some sort of purpose and the arugula or the lettuce or whatever I plant here is actually going to be able to use that water and that's going to keep these eggplants basically happy and really that's all there is to it. You just want to kind of keep this not dry but you definitely don't want to overwater it and don't be afraid to grow anything you want around this. Anything that's in the winter that isn't that big like I wouldn't plant a broccoli or a cabbage here because those are pretty aggressive in terms of their root size and their growth but lettuces, arugula, greens, beets, all that could go in here without any issue. And there's no reason whatsoever to waste this garden space. And there you have it. There's three overwintered eggplants. You might have seen that little clip of me cutting out the fourth one. And then all I really did is take compost and apply it maybe half an inch to an inch thick right on top of this bed. I buried all the straw underneath and you could see actually around the eggplants that I've overwintered some of the straw sticking out because I did not go around them here and that's to avoid rot on the plant there. Um, all I did after that is I spread the compost, I firmed it with my hand and then I just sprinkled arugula seed all along the bed. So hopefully in a week or two I'll have a nice bed of arugula here and I've lost nothing in the process of having eggplant for spring next year. So I highly recommend you guys all try this at home. There's really no downside except for maybe holding on to disease. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. This one might have been a little bit on the longer side, but I really wanted to get in and show you guys exactly what's going on when I overwinter a eggplant or pepper and kind of give you an example of the different things that you might see and different things you might encounter. And I really hope you guys give it a try this year or next year, any year. <laughs> and I hope you guys also go ahead and utilize your garden to its fullest extent possible. Like for instance, this eggplant, which will now be a salad bed over the winter. And with that in mind, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up or a like. And until next time, Garden Hermits out.